a college basketball coach who brews his own beer that ISNT something you hear all that often, but in the case of Portland head coach Terry Porter he's been using those skills to help those in need. For the second straight year Porter has partnered with Gilgamesh Brewing to make the Terry Porter, and on October 22nd he'll be signing bottles of the beer at the New Seasons Market University Park location in Portland. Proceeds will be donated to the Dorn Betcher Children's Hospital Foundation, with other items available for signing at the event as well. As noted above this is not the first time that Porter and Gilgamesh have done this, with their first fundraiser for the Dorn Betcher taking place in January 2016. Beginning in September and running up through November 10, the first day of the regular season, College Basketball Talk will be unveiling the 20,172,018 NBCSports.com College Hoops Preview Package. Today, we are previewing the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. There's plenty of change in the MAAC this season, but the one that will be most visible could very well be the schedule. The league took steps in the offseason that they hope will help boost its members' RPI. They've trimmed the conference schedule from 20 to 18 games, eliminating the true home and home round robin in favor of pitting the top teams against each other and opening up non-conference opportunities. The top teams in the league are required to schedule top 250 RPI squads. After seeing Monmouth put together back-to-back -back monster seasons without an NCAA tournament berth, it's probably a good move for the MAAC to try to do what they can to improve an already strong league. King Rice's Hawks will face a tall task in trying to repeat their success of the last two seasons, and finally secure that NCAA tournament bid, after the graduation of MAAC Player of the Year Justin Robinson and second-leading scorer Yellen Hornbeek. Junior Micah Seaburn will be asked to step into the void, which means he'll have to seriously improve his efficiency to keep Monmouth's offense humming, especially with the Hawks having lost a good chunk of their shooting from last season. After taking the league's automatic NCAA tournament spot the last two years, Iona is in much the same spot as Monmouth, trying to replace program stalwarts. Jordan Washington, who had one of the highest usage rates in the country last year, is gone to graduation, as are guards Sam Castle and John Severe. TK Edogi, a 6-foot-8 forward, moves from a small role at Tulsa to a potentially huge one with the Gales, as does Massachusetts transfer Zach Luz. The key for Tim Clue's squad is probably shoring up the defense. With Washington getting buckets inside, the Gales were able to out offense teams while their defense lagged well behind. The offense is likely to take a hit this season, so if the defense can make up some of the difference, Iona could be in the picture at the top of the league again. Fairfield HASNT finished in the top three of the MAAC since 2012, but with Tyler Nelson back for his senior season, the Stags have a chance to push for a top spot in the league. Transfer losses of Curtis Cobb UMass and Jerry Johnson Chattanooga certainly hurt, but Nelson is the type of player that can help cover up a lot of issues. Plus, point guard Jerome Segura is adept at getting others involved, which may be the key as Nelson is sure to shoulder a heavy load, but won't be able to do it. All alone, finding additional shooting will be critical for the Stags. Niagara HASNT made much noise in the MAAC in recent seasons, but the Purple Eagles have one of the top Onetwa combinations in the league in Matt Scott and Khalil Dukes. Both need to improve their efficiency inside the arc, but it's their three-point shooting that helps move the needle. If the two of them are special, Niagara has a chance to do some damage. More 201,718 season preview coverage, conference previews, preview schedule, preseason MAAC Player of the Year Tyler Nelson, Fairfield the 6'3 guard returns for his senior season as the MAAC's top scorer after averaging nearly 20 points per game last season. He's a near 40% three-point shooter as well as an important distributor for the Stags, expect a huge minutes and usage load for Nelson, and the big stats to match. The rest of the preseason MAAC team Matt Scott, Niagara put up 17 points per game, but his 7 rebounds per game may be more impressive from a 6'4 guard. Jermaine Crumpton, Kinesius Crumpton is a 6'6, 245-pound tank, but a skilled one who shot nearly 4 three-pointers per game, hitting 42-9% of them. Last season, Mitch Seaburn, Monmouth will be tasked with a big scoring role after the departures of Justin Robinson and Yellen Hornbeek. Khalil Dukes, Niagara the former USC Trojan shot 41.4% from the three-point line and 92.1% from the free-throw line while averaging better than 15 points per game. Predicted finish 1, Iona 2, Monmouth 3, Niagara 4, Fairfield 5, Manhattan 6, St. Peter's 7, Siena 8, Ryder 9, Kinesius 10, Marist 11. Quinnipiac we are now less than four weeks away from the start of the college basketball season, which means that it is time for us to officially get our picks on the record. 
Here, our writers pick who we think will win each league, the national title and the major awards Big Ten Preview ACC Preview Atlantic Ten Preview Mountain West Preview Perry Ellis All-Stars Final Four Sleepers Louisville Villanova West Virginia The Enigma of Miles Bridges NBC Sports Preseason All-American Team In his first season as head coach at UMass, Matt McCall inherited a couple players capable of aiding in the rebuilding process in guard Louis Pipkins and forward Rashawn Holloway, and he added a transfer guard and Jalen Brantley. Brantley, who played two seasons at Maryland before returning to his home state, was expected to be an immediate factor in the Minutemen rotation this season. Unfortunately that will not be the case, as it was announced Tuesday that Brantley's career is over after a previously undetected heart ailment was found during a medical exam. UMass has a medical policy in which it administers an electrocardiogram EKG test as part of its initial examination of incoming athletes, which is how Brantley's heart ailment was detected. While knowing my basketball career will be over, the fact that I will be able to live a healthy, normal lifestyle does give me peace of mind, Brantley said per the release. This has been a hard process, but I am thankful for the support and guidance of Coach McCall, the medical staff at UMass, my teammates, my mother and my family. It's certainly a difficult diagnosis to receive, but there is so much I want to do in life and knowing this early will help me in the long term. I thank God that this condition was detected and may have saved my life and, for that, I will be forever grateful. While Brantley's career coming to an end is certainly a negative, it is good for his sake that this situation was detected. Brantley, who transferred to UMass as a graduate student, will remain on scholarship while helping the program in what was termed as a leadership role in the release. As for how Brantley's situation impacts UMass on the court, the team's depth at the point takes a hit with Pipkins and redshirt freshman Unique McLean being the other available scholarship options. Kean Clergeau, who began his collegiate career at Memphis, will sit out this season per NCAA transfer rules. UCLA received its second verbal commitment in the class of 2018 on Tuesday, as 6'6 shooting guard Jules Bernard announced that he will be a Bruin. Bernard, considered to be a four-star prospect, joins another perimeter prospect and four-star guard David Singleton three in Steve Alford's 2018 class to date. Bernard, who averaged 25 points and 12 rebounds per game at the Winward School in Los Angeles, was also a standout for the Compton Magic grassroots program on the Adidas Uprising circuit. This has been a humbling and amazing journey over the last few years, Bernard said in the release. I've been fortunate to have met some special people who have taught me, mentored me, molded me, and guided me. I would like to thank all the college coaches and schools that believed in me, recruited me, and those who put time and effort into getting to know me and my family. I am excited and honored to continue my education and growth as a basketball player in my hometown at UCLA. Bernard's size and versatility makes him a good addition to the UCLA program, which does not lack for young talent on the perimeter. This year's team has four freshmen among its perimeter players, including point guard Jalen Hans, shooting guard Leon Gallo Ball and wings Chris Wilkes and Chris Smith. UCLA also has three returnees on the perimeter from last season's Sweet 16 team, junior Aaron Holiday and redshirt sophomores Prince Ale and Alex Olashinsky. Ali, who averaged 3.9 points in just under 12 minutes per game as a freshman, sat out last season after undergoing off-season knee surgery to repair a torn meniscus in his left knee. Five of the ten men that were arrested two weeks ago as the result of an FBI investigation into corruption in college basketball were arraigned in a courthouse in Lower Manhattan on Tuesday morning and released on $100,000 bond. Merle Code, an Adidas executive that previously worked for Nike's grassroots circuit, and three assistant coaches, USC's Tony Bland, Arizona's Emmanuel Book Richardson and Auburn's Chuck Person, appeared before Judge Catherine Parker, according to Zag's blog. Rashawn Michelle, a clothier from Atlanta, was arraigned separately. Oklahoma State assistant coach Lamont Evans and another Adidas executive, Jim Gatto, are expected to appear in court on Thursday. The five men that were arraigned on Tuesday now await a November 9 preliminary hearing, where a trial will be scheduled if it is determined that there is enough evidence. Gatto and Code are accused of helping to funnel $100,000 to the family of former Louisville freshman Brian Bowen to get the player to attend Louisville. Evans, Bland and Person are alleged to have taken bribes to steer players under their influence to specific financial advisors. Richardson is accused of doing the same, while also allegedly funneling $15,000 to the family of Javon Quinterly, a point guard committed to Arizona. This weekend, Quinterly told reporters at a Team USA training camp in Colorado Springs that his family has hired a lawyer. He did not comment on whether or not his family had received money from Richardson.